You're listening to Online Pet Health Podcasts with Dr. Megan Kelly, continuing education for veterinarian rehabilitation therapists. Learn more at OnlinePetHealth.com. Hey, Vet Rehabbers. Welcome to the Vet Me Rehabilitation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Megan Kelly, and I've got a fellow South African, Heather Whitfield, from Positive Pausabilities, and she's based in Centurion in South Africa. Heather, thank you so much for joining me on a Behind the Rehab Practice. Hi, Meg. Um, thank you so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to share our story with you. Heather, I, I was trying to think about the first time that we met, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you actually came to my practice um, in case uh, you come and have a look at my treadmill. I did indeed, and when I was um, kind of contemplating our, our little interview today, I went back, and that was, I think, in a, towards the end of 2006 that I've met you initially. Um, so, yeah, it's been a long time. It has, and you've done a lot since then. So I think at that stage, you were just thinking about getting into the field, and you were trying to learn a little bit more. You came and had a look at the treadmill. So just run through from then to now. I know it's quite a lot, but you can maybe do a little summary for us, sort of where your path has taken you. Yeah. Absolutely. I am, um, yeah, I kind of in, in 2004 was on a personal level introduced to hydrotherapy for myself through a biokinetic practice. And I was just so amazed with my own um, progress within this, this rehab program. And I really thought to myself, gee whiz, if this can work for me, how much more can it do for animals? Because somewhere along the line, I always had this passion and inclination to work with animals. And I was really at the point where I also may be thinking of a career change. And I actually productively started looking for a work in the pet industry. And thank goodness, I found a, a position available at Tillington Tea Patch South Africa. I moved forward towards that. And, um, and I think it must have been destined because at that time period, I had to take my employer's dog to doggy pack. And I met Alison, and that was just a deal breaker for me. I knew this is what I wanted to do. But like, you know, at that stage in 2004, 2005, there was very little about vet physio or physical rehabilitation in South Africa. And that's why I met up with you, with Alison, Dr. Monique Cross, when she was still in South Africa. I met with Tanya Cranton to really ask the experts what did they think at that stage. And, um, you know, everybody came kind of from different areas. I spent a lot of time with um, Renell Killian at that stage. She was here, Dr. Killian's wife. And um, she came from the UK side of training. And I tried to investigate that. And, yeah, so I went off to the UK, did the courses. But also I did so many courses. I qualified as a... Um, a dog trainer, a behaviorist, um, a Tellington T Touch practitioner. Eventually, I went the CCRP route, and um, I've just, I'm in the most amazing career ever available. And you're actually using all of those things now in your practice. So, your, your practice actually, which we'll get onto. Um, so, everything that you've actually done, I see now, you know, just chatting to you, that you've incorporated this into your practice. So, tell us a little bit about. The practice that you have now and what you do and a little bit about your your staff and you know how it's expanded great um i was very very fortunate that in 2017 i could have purchased the most amazing practice possibly in the entire world um i must quickly tell you um off the topic but i had um um daryl millis here two years ago and his jaw just dropped he said to me heather it's possibly one of the most impressive practices that I have seen in the entire world, and I do travel a lot. So it was just giving me a sense of, yes, we are doing something right. And, I, and I'm really proud of the fact that I created the most beautiful and tranquil environment for any staff member or pet or patient or client to be in, which is really, really a bliss to work in. And so obviously the veterinary physical rehabilitation is a core, but all the entities that's relating to that, we've got the hydrotherapy practice, I've got a huge indoor dog training arena, I've got 
got a pet active gym, I've got individual consultation rooms, I've got office, we've got the shop, I've got the lecture room for CPD events or informative talks, and um, I've got a little hospice and palliative care center. And then also to accommodate our clients who have to stay, we've got kennel facilities for our boarding patients, which might be day patients or long-term patients. So it is really, um, we're very fortunate that we have got the space and the setup to be able to cater for all these entities. So now with all of that, you obviously need a lot of staff. So how many staff have you got? And um, are you managing them or do you have a practice manager to manage them? Um, unfortunately, I do not have a practice manager, um, definitely on my, on my future plans. But yes, um, and I believe in long-term relationship with my staff. Um, and um, I've, I've got um, Michelle Shackelford, which I've known for many, many years. She is possibly, I think, the most knowledgeable, incredible, multifunctional and versatile patient uh, or, or um, a staff member ever. And we really just clicked from the day that I met her. Um, and then I've got Dr. Megan Estraser here. Um, and having a vet on board, I can tell you now, is the best thing ever. And, you know, it just upped our standards to the next level. And we are really fortunate to have that expertise in the practice as well. I've got an a, a office administrator, if I can call it that. Um, then I've got an a all-round um, guy here who has been our kennel manager, our maintenance program. Um, his outreach is just an absolute bliss to have him. So it's not a big staff compliment, um, but I think we all here with the same idea of my, in mind and we all really made the business our own. And where we can, we absolutely try and complement each other and just bring out the best in everybody. So what hours uh, are you working now? So are you, do, are you open seven days a week or what are your days and, and hours? Okay, so um, I'm normally in the office from uh, from about 6.30 to 7 in the mornings, just having a bit of quiet time setting up um, um, the day ahead. Um, but yeah, we run the business from 8 in the morning to, to about 7 in the evenings. So between all of us, we kind of have different shifts. I've got an a, a 8 to 2 um, therapist, then myself most of the day. And then we've got a late therapist from 10 to 7. So we've got a nice spread and we can try and accommodate all our patients. And then weekends, we open from 8 to 2. Um, and then we rotate the weekends as well. So um, we've got a really nice spread. And I think that's quite a bliss for the vets when they refer the patients to us that we can try and accommodate them really when the time, time suits them and um, have so many slots available to accommodate all our clients. Yeah, I know because those weekend days are actually so important. Um, yeah. When I was in practice, I I didn't consult on the weekend. Um, so I, I was canoeing as a sport and the races were all on a Saturday. So I made a decision that I wouldn't. But we still had hydrotherapy um, that was available on Saturdays. But those are always our busiest days. And I know chatting to a lot of other rehab therapists that some of them are just fully booked on a Saturday because those are when our clients are not working and they're actually yeah, helping to bring the... And the I, think, to us. I think if I should put, open up my practice to seven o'clock on a Saturday in the evening, I would be fully booked as well. But then um, you have to set those boundaries and you have to consider your own personal time as well. So obviously running your own practice and, you know, there's loads of things that are happening. You're managing people, but you also are treating patients, aren't you? I am indeed, yes. And um, I think, you know what, quite often that is really what sustained me. I love being hands-on with the patients. Um, I love the relationship that you build with the pets, with the pet owners. And, um, you know, it's just really one of those things that, I, I really entered into this industry to have that hands-on connection with, with the people and to really, really make a different difference. But yeah, running a business is, is really challenging. Um, you know, I don't actually think that a lot of people knows what it really entails to run a veterinary physical practice. If you're just one person like I was for a, a long time period, it's quite nice and easy. You're just creating a job for yourself. 
but if the need to actually warrant a growth process, um, it's a total different ball game. And being the responsible person to actually pay salaries, to pay the bond, to make sure the business runs smoothly and there's all the, um, that everything is just in place. It really takes a lot of time and effort and careful planning and budgeting to make sure that everything is just um, the way that you want it to be. Yeah, I mean, how do you manage your time? Because one of the big problems is, is that our consults are so long. So, you know, we end up consulting most of the day and then you end up sitting at night doing all that admin and all that. Is that what you do? Or you know, I've spoken to some therapists and they actually block off like two afternoons a week to do the management and admin. How do you do it? Yeah, so um, like I said, I'm in first thing in the morning. Um, thank goodness we've got um, the shock system going that is really alleviating some sometimes so we all got our little iPads and as you do your initial consultation immediately you do it on, on your on your iPad and it just gets links up to the main server um, and it, it does take time to really set up your your sessions that you have done with your clients um, but it does take careful planning I normally take about two hours a day to really make phone calls to to liaise with bets if there's um, uh, cases that we need to discuss. Obviously, um, to juggle the diary, so you can't have two um, reactive dogs and a cat in the, in the same environment at the same time. But you also want to go out of your way to accommodate your client to a spot that will, is most likely to suit them. Um, but then also coming back to the administration, um, there's so many things I need to consider because as a behaviorist, I do a lot of behavior modification plan. I've got a lot of other projects that I am running at the moment. So my time is really, really precious. And um, I do think that um, a lot of people think, oh, you're not working, you're sitting in the office. But um, <laughs> it's, it's those things that you have to work time in to let everything just run the way it should be done. But I am fortunate that all my staff is really multifunctional. Um, every, everybody can do a little bit of everything, especially when it comes to the administrative side. And um, yes, we do rotate to, to make sure the accounts are reconciled and this and that and so forth. Um, but again, it comes to everybody. We need to work as a team together to make it successful. Let's backtrack a little bit. You were mentioning um, Shark. Is that the Shark software? That's correct, yes. And yeah. yeah. um, how long have you had that for? Um, possibly for a year now. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that I would like to customize if it was my own personal program. Um, but you know what? It is effective. It's, it's made your search facilities really nice and easy. It's very professional if you would like to send a feedback report to the vet. Um, so it, it just presents really, really professional. And, um, you know, it does take time to capture all your, all your sessions and what you ever do. But it just comes to boil down, you have to create a habit, ensure that you do it on a regular basis. I mean, back in the day when, when I was, and I had my practice, I was just on paper. Um, and it's always that, you know, you open the file and then, you know, somebody else has had the file for hydrotherapy and then your pay, piece of paper is not there. <laughs> you have to find out where it is and get it back, you know. So I love the idea of online and um, it's great that all these softwares are coming in. Now, obviously, what we do is a little bit different to what normal vets are doing. Yes, I mean, absolutely. So it's great that people are making software specifically for us. Um, absolutely. So you must give them feedback and get them to, to make some changes because I'm sure some of the things that you're wanting to customize would be great advice for them. Absolutely. No, I must, I must definitely do that. Mm. So... Um, we were chatting earlier and we were just chatting about, you know, continuing learning and um, I know that you are an online pet health member, so you're always online looking at webinars and, and learning, um, but you were discussing a little bit of a um, personal development that you've had recently where you've been um, doing um, business, improving your business skills. Chat to us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, you know, it really comes came to a point um, I would say mid last year, that we are just so overwhelmed with the amount of patients that you see that, you know, all these 
vital administrative things just lag behind and you get more and more and more behind. And at the end of the day, I realized, you know what, um, for all the courses that I've ever done, I really thought I was clued up. But sitting back and looking holistically at everything, I realized I really needed business skills, business management skills. I need to get my tools in place. I need to really consider my time management because um, I was just burning the candle at all ends and in between. And um, you come to a point where it, it really kind of affects your, your health, it, it, it affects your fitness, your relationship, and you really have to set those boundaries. So um, last year, I really started investigating what is my biggest need? What should be my biggest priority? And this entire year, um, I have dedicated to business development. So I am um, connected with a company called The Real Entrepreneur, which is just highly, highly, highly recommendable. And through the actual courses, the online courses, we connected with absolute expertise throughout the entire world who really helped me to take my business to the next level. And I can honestly say, Megan, we can see the results. It is just phenomenal. So we've done everything from, from setting goals, how to really define your strategies, how to raise your standards, customer services, social media campaigns, um, and really staff motivation and so forth. So the list is just ongoing. And I really think um, that is something every business owner should really invest the time in if that is not your full take because unfortunately we don't get to, to learn those skills and um, when you study veterinary physical rehabilitation or, or in that field um, but going hand in hand with that concept of business development i truly have to look within as well and i started with the same process of doing a lot of personal development and through another online company i actually got to a program where you honestly look at every category in your life making up your being and your purpose on life and through that they look at your premises on every single category category that might include health and fitness or emotional relationship or career and business and then define what your premises and your beliefs are about it what is your vision where you eventually want to be what is your purpose as as a person within yourself, within your community, how can you make a difference um, in your larger community or in the world? And then obviously have to really define your strategies, how to accomplish those goals and visions. And um, I really think it is, it's been a life-changing journey for me. And I, I think we as humans owe it to ourselves to find the absolute best in you and by growing yourself, naturally everything else will, will take the effect. Yeah, I mean, I think this is great. And I think, you know, if I look at Vet Rehab Therapists, we haven't had any formal business training. So it's something that we're not familiar with. And I think when you're uncomfortable with something, you know, because most of us, you know, we're comfortable with the veterinary rehab side of things. Yep. And we just continue <laughs> to focus on what we're good at. And we just hide mm. our heads in the sand. Um, with the things that we're bad at. And we just think, well, it's just, hopefully it'll fall into place. Um, mm. And the problem is, is that, like you said earlier, when it was just you, it tends to be okay. And then as yeah. it's getting bigger and you're growing, um, you get to this point where, you know, you plateau a little bit, the business plateaus, and the expenses start to rise, and the, the profit starts to decrease. And then you actually have to do a whole lot of shifts. You can't keep running your practice the same way that you were. You have to shift a few things. Absolutely. And this is where I'm sure these business skills have really, really helped. And obviously today, everything's changing. You know, marketing is completely different to what it was five years ago. Um, yes. So keeping up to date with all of that um, can, can sometimes be tricky. Um, but it is so important because a lot of vet rehab practices, what I find, are really, really busy. So you speak to the people and they are fully booked but yet they're struggling financially. And if you think about other businesses, all right, other businesses, so in completely different small businesses, so like let's say it's a panel beater or whatever, 
the reason that they are not doing well is because they don't have clients. So a lot of us yeah. don't have that problem. We've got the clients. We just need to optimize our businesses so that they are more profitable. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. So. I, I can I can quickly tell you with, within this they kind of um the the business development they kind of challenged us to to venture a little bit into social media and um I might be really old school but I really that's not my forte in any shape or way or form. But we, we've tried a couple of um, Facebook marketing campaigns. And just recently, I've done a really, really basic campaign. And within 24 hours, I had 35 new evaluations booked up. And I mean, it's so nice because 90% of these people are returning and the rest are all taking packages. And all of a sudden, my next three months are fully, fully booked. And it cost me very, very little. I think it cost me like a seven rand fifty per client. Where yeah. at the end of the day, you get that return over and over and over. And um, obviously, I think social is the way that most businesses are going. And somewhere along the line, we have to try and keep, keep up with, with the rest of the world. So you mentioned um, Facebook marketing. So it's obviously something that you're dabbling in. What other forms of marketing do you do for your practice? Um, not too much. I, I do see a lot of word of mouth. I have got an amazing rapport with most of my vets. And um, the vets have really been supporting me nonstop. And I also got a really special relationship, I think, with all my vets. I do see them on quite a regular basis. When we host CPD um, talks or interesting talks, I always make a point of um, liaising with them, inviting them, inviting their soul. Would you like to? The feedback is always, yes, Heather, we will support you. And I think, you know, just having that personal interaction with the vet on a regular basis um, really um, get them feeling comfortable referring to us. But I also make a point of it once we have done a re-evaluation on a patient to, to ask the pet owner to go back to the vet and actually give him or her the feedback of your experience with us, of the changes that you have seen. And um, you know what? Most of the time when we even ask our own clients for feedback, what I do um, on a regular basis, every single time we have exceeded expectations. And I think for a vet to know, I know the patient is in good hands when they go to, to positive possibility. That initially just don't make them think sec, uh, second thoughts of where I should refer the patient to. And it comes to a point where you really know that your vets are trusting you when you get the occasional phone call and say, Heather, I've got X, Y, and Z patient. What would you recommend? And, you know, that's such a nice feeling to know that the vets are actually really giving you recognition for your input and they value your input. Um, so that, uh, I think that that's part of a, bit, a big part of the marketing. Yeah, I think, you know, what you said, you just ask your clients and that's a big thing. I think sometimes we just forget to ask for help. Ask yeah. our clients, say, please do this. Because a lot of them might think it, but not every one mm -hmm. of them will just go and say it. Um, so guys, just go and ask your clients to spread the word about you, to give the vets feedback, especially in those new practices, because um, it yeah. does take a, a while for the word of mouth um, to spread, but it's sometimes okay just to ask for a little bit of help in, in so doing it. Yeah, just that's touching on there coming to mind now, what I think that's also really beneficial in my situation. I do present a lot of puppy socialization classes and dog training classes. And whenever those people come into the practice, they kind of amaze and say, oh, what else do you do here? And uh, excuse me, through that, we quite often gain a lot of new clients as well. Um, and, you know, especially I might see, well, it often happens that I've seen a puppy um, eight or 10 years ago, and all of a sudden those puppies are really old dogs, and now they're suffering from aches and pains and osteoarthritis. And the people will phone me up and say, Either are you still doing that? Because I could remember from, from when I saw you initially. And it's so nice to have those type of people remembering you after so many years and bringing their pets back to the practice. 
Yeah, well, especially when you've got an established practice like yours, and obviously all the different things that you're doing is getting great exposure and just bringing people in. And those people are also telling other people, oh, I went to this place. They do this. Maybe you should take your dog there. Yeah. So that's great. Let's um, chat a little bit about all the equipment that you've got. Um, and, you know, I know when you when you want to buy something like an underwater treadmill or a laser or something like that it's always one of those kind of like kind of moments you're a bit worried about it so <laughs> tell us a little bit about what you've got and um you know if you've regretted buying any of those if you had any regrets if you were how you were feeling when you made that you know click the button to say okay i'm gonna do it i'm gonna buy that <laughs> yeah so um um i have got um underwater treadmill and um, in 2005 I was actually um, earlier prior to that I was really frustrated with my initial treadmill that I had you know the maintenance was just not what I expected I had more down really had to to make it work for me so I sat down with a local engineering company we literally took the the treadmill apart and we saw how we can advance it how we can better it and also working with a piece of equipment a number of years, you kind of think, I would rather have this and have that. And I think it was a really good concept initially, but having their expertise and my little bit of experience using a treadmill for a long time, we really redesigned the treadmill and um, it is just absolutely super treadmill. Um, and the engineering, engineering company subsequently have bought quite a number of these treadmills for other rehab practices. So it's so nice to see that something I have invested the time and effort in is now servicing other, other practices. So that have just paid itself off within less than a year. Um, and it was a huge capital outline being the very first one that people bought. And, you know, it's trial and error. Um, but I'm so happy with that. Then um, over the past couple of months, I kind of ventured into a little bit of exploring the need for assisted devices. So um, I had a look and we kind of developing a range that is good to us. Um, then uh, we've got um, your Fatizo, your EMS, the therapeutic ultrasound, I've got the spa bar, and all the basic modalities what we've got. Our pet, um, our gym area is amazing. It's a fully fledged gym with peanut balls and balance boards and everything you can think of to make us think out of the box. And we can really accommodate any type of injury within the gym area. And it's so nice because the place never looks the same because I've got my own idea of what I want to do in the other therapist. And, and you know, we kind of feed off each other's and I might come up with an idea that really works. And then the next person will say, but this kind of really worked for this patient. So we just love being active and being in the gym with the, with the pets and doing therapeutic exercises. So no regrets on any of the purchases that you've made? No, absolutely nothing. No, I am. Um, no, honestly, I can't say that there's anything. Yeah, I think you know it's always a it's always one of those things where you're worried about it, but you've got to just jump in um, and just do it. Um, I never regretted any of the the big outlays that I made. It was a bit scary, but um, never regretted it. So. No, it, it's definitely scary, especially when I actually purchased the the property. Um, I mean, all of a sudden you've got a, a really big bond to pay or a mortgage, and that you have to pay. Um, expanding means that I had to get additional. Um, having your own business and your own property, every single cent that you invest is for yourself. You're not paying somebody else's rent and so forth. So every improvement that you make um, is just benefiting the business at the end of the day. And it, it's, it really gives you a sense of accomplishment at the end of the day, if you can look back and say, um, in the beginning, it was a very scary thought to, to give the capital outline, but now it is good. But yeah, there's a lot of things that I really want to invest in the future, but um, it will come as the budget grows. <laughs> Let's chat a little bit about your pet gym that you mentioned. Is that um, something that you just incorporate into the practice or are there people that are like um, pet owners are able to come and use the gym or is it always with one of the therapists or how does it work? Okay, so there are basically two aspects to it. Um, I am always with the patient. So 
I can't really call them patients because quite often it is pets that come in that is our canine athletes, they are working dogs, and just people who wants to keep their dog at the absolute most incredible fitness level. So what we incorporate into the gym is a lot of mental stimulation. We do a lot of hydrotherapy, either swimming or treadmill work. We do a lot of balance proprioception work, um, core, core strengthening, and just really keep the dog active and a top condition within all aspects of its working environment. Um, next year, there's about six of my current pets within this program who is doing different um, modalities in world championships. So it is really awesome to see these dogs just getting better and better and better in what they're doing. But on the other hand, I've got a lot of people who work out all day or they work and they come in the evening so we can teach them to run your pet on the treadmill. We show you how to do the core strengthening exercises. We show you how to do the land treadmill and all the obstacles and so forth. And it's a really fun environment for our own dog, but we are always there as um, a, th a therapist to, to guide them and setting up a program that will suit the dog. It is based on Robbie Porter's um, It's Possible program. So I do a lot of ball work, a lot of um, balance, proprioceptive work. And um, it, it, it's really challenging, not just for me, because every single week I have to figure out the new obstacle course that's going to really stimulate and challenge the dogs in a different level. But it's, it's amazing to see the involvement of these owners. Um, and, you know, they will come up with certain ideas. And whether it's going to work or not, we don't know, but we're going to try it. And the dogs just always have this sense of, gee, I achieved this. What's the next one? So I, I have endless amounts of fun within the gym. So do you do those classes? So you have like 10 people that come or is it one-on-ones or how does it work? Yeah, it's definitely one-on-one. -on -one. So each, each dog that comes in got my full attention for the time period that we work with. Them. And how long is it? 15 minutes, half an it's, hour? No, no, it's normally an hour. An hour, sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You basically charge a consultation fee for that. I do, I do. I have got various packages as well. Um, I've got a lot of people who's kind of, if you go to a gym and you, you sign up for a six months um, a, a, a program or whatever, I've got some of those people as well. Actually, people who sign up for an entire year. And obviously, for the longer they signed up, you, we created the debit order and it is paid for upfront. And it, it really works for them. So, um, but where they want to pay monthly, the more, the longer their commitment, obviously I can negotiate a, a fee for a package. And then say for those people that I've signed up for six months, what do they get? Do they get like one class a week or how does it work? Yes, basically a class a week. So we do, do initial evaluations where we look at your gomeometry and circumferences, gait analysis and really see where we want to improve whatever aspect and also depends on what um, work the dog does or which in, and in what um, uh, field the dog is uh, athlete in and so on. And obviously with our um, agility dogs, we know they're prone to certain injuries. So we really will focus to keep those aspects as healthy as possible. Um, but yeah, they do get a full assessment on a regular basis. Um, we do discuss nutrition within this. We do the, the rehab side to, to exercise those core. Um, and it's just, I can actually customize a program to whatever the client's needs will be. And um, it, it's just to have fun at the end of the day and give these dogs that there's absolutely nothing wrong to really challenge them in different levels. So I'm trying to um, understand now. So if a client, let's say they're going away for two weeks, do they get those and they can have them at another time? Or is it like a gym yeah, where you basically pay and that's it? If you, if you miss those, you miss them. No, no, no. Um, I would not do it. These clients are regular clients and you really want to keep them for as long as possible. So no, you know, if, if life happens, if a client can't make it, you literally will just work, work with that session in whenever um, my schedule and their schedule will allow for. Um, but John, um, I mean, these people are really committed to make a change and um, it's nice to have those type of clients. So 
um, I really will sit and before each client, I will know what we have done previously with the, with the actual animal and what we want to achieve. Is there certain things, maybe three, there is, a, say for instance, a core weakness, we will work on the core. If we see there's a proprioception issue, we will really focus on proprioception. If we see there's maybe a bit of confidence issues, we will work with confidence issues. So I incorporate clicker training to it and um, just really, it's a package to stimulate the dog on all levels. I love it. It's a really great source of recurring income as well, especially when they're on a subscription. Um, so it's yes. really, it's good for cash flow. <laughs> Absolutely. So I was in the States um, for one of the IAVRPT conferences ages ago, actually. It was, I think, 2010. And I was in Denver. And um, they I actually went to a sort of pet gym, which was absolutely amazing. Um, there was like a little swing door even, swipe your card, take your dog in. <laughs> there were like three underwater treadmills, a massive pool, and there were dogs doing dock diving. And there were therapists around, so there were people that were overseeing. So a little bit like the gyms here, you know, the Virgin Active gyms here where you have people standing around that can help if need be, but it was actually more the actual client was doing it. So a little bit, obviously they must have had to go through some type of um, sort of introductory um, course or something to be able to be there because there were balls and there were things that they could use. So they must have had to know, um, but it was really interesting. So it was like a really a normal gym. So is there any sort of um, ideas that you have to, to do this? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You've taken the words out of my mouth. Yes, in the future, I most definitely would like to venture into that kind of concept as well. Um, mm -hmm. It is, again, it's a major capital outline to set up something like that. But it is a, it's a, it's amazing concept. I just absolutely love it. And especially if you can have it in a really safe environment. Because I mean, so often it's not safe to go um, to go and walk your dog at, at six or seven o'clock in the morning, or go for a jog at six o'clock in the in the evening, um, and really gives the owners that sense of responsibilities. And it's a good workout for the owners as well, not just for the dog. Mm. I had this idea once of getting hold of Richard Branson, and um, you know, with the Virgin Gym. So for those of you that are not based here in South Africa. Um, I'm not sure whether Virgin Gyms is everywhere around the world, um, but, you know, he has Virgin Atlantic and he, in South Africa, has Virgin Active, which are the major gyms all around the country here in South Africa. So I had this plan. I was going to contact him and say to him he needs to build, basically, right adjacent to the Virgin Actives, a pet active, you know. So yeah, bring their dogs, they, they can bring their dogs with, you know, and they can go do a little bit of gym and leave them in a kennel there or whatever, and then come and then do some, some um, exercises with their pets at the Pet Active. Um, so, yeah, I never did it, but it was always an idea. I thought it would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should talk. <laughs> um, Heather, you've also been um, involved in some real estate too. So Heather, she's doing loads of different things. And you can hear about her sister device, and she's obviously got this. She's going to partner up with Richard Branson in the near future. But she's uh, doing some real estate. And tell us a little bit about, about this new sort of venture that you've um, been working on for quite a while now. Yeah, I have been incredibly fortunate. Um, Pam Golding Property South Africa, and um, particularly Pretoria, approached me. And they kind of contracted me in to help them setting up the first ever completely pet-friendly apartments throughout the greater Pretoria. Um, so basically, I had to sit down with the developers, with the architects, and how we can incorporate um, uh, dog daycare centers within the apartment buildings. So obviously, the dogs get the necessary stimulation um, when they're not there. But in just general, from a behavior aspect, how to really stimulate the dogs if they become an apartment dog. And obviously to do some compatibility um, assessments to see whether the owner and the dog is compatible for apartment living and really bring in a culture into South Africa to say, listen, 
pets are so much part of our world and we really want them. But as pet owners, you have to take the responsibility to actually completely work with these pets. So I was fortunate to go to Milan um, last year, who is actually called the, the, the pet center of the entire world in terms of apartment living and really go and see how they're doing their concept there. And you know, it's absolutely nothing to see um, people getting on the tram with their cat in a basket or their dog or their parrot and they hop off from the tram from one place to the next stop, which is their dog daycare center or the cat daycare center, where they drop the pet um, for the day and in the evening they make their route back again. And at these centers, they've got a vet who will do basic things. They've got um, stimulation. They've got basic um, dog walking. They've got training. They've got grooming. Um, everything is right there in one center fold. But in South Africa, we are so used to jump in your car and quickly drive down to the spa. So part of the concept is to really build a culture where people know it's their responsibility to keep their dogs sane when they're in an apartment environment. So I am fortunate I incorporated Medipet into this concept, Hills, um, Kong and Rocks. I've got groomers involved. I've got my local vet involved who will be overseeing this. And um, so at this stage for our very first um, apartment occupation starts in November. So we are doing assessments on all these dogs. We're doing compatibility questionnaires and um, building profiles. And I also worked with a, a, um, a dog behaviorist, but he's also a, 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 an attorney specializing in um, pet issues. So we have really looked at all aspects to really make it legal for the body corporate, what is expected of the dog saying in there, and um, I was also fortunate to have the advice to trademark this concept in South Africa, which I have done. Um, we developed the most amazing online pet-friendly um, apartment living guide, which is available on the internet and through Pam Golding. And we're really, really going to expand this into, into a different culture in South Africa. And I'm so fortunate to be part of it. Well, it's amazing. Uh, very, very exciting. And um, Heather, I commend you on all your entrepreneurial ideas and most of all, putting them into action. So a lot of us have ideas um, and we don't actually do anything about it. So congratulations on everything that you're doing and I wish you all the success with all your different projects. And I thank you for your time and um, you've really um, shared lots about all the things. And, and I want to um, challenge all those vet rehab therapists that you guys are, that have got ideas. Um, Heather is a, a prime example of somebody who is doing vet rehab, but is also using her knowledge of pets um, to do other little projects on the side, um, which is great for networking and just yeah, just being involved in animals and helping where we can. So well done, Heather. Oh, thanks, Megan, and and thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolutely wonderful chat, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to to give feedback when I see you in person um, hopefully with the Starpa conference and um, yeah, it's going to be lovely just putting everything in place and just go from strength to strength. Awesome, Heather. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for your time. You too. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Vet Rehabbers, thanks for listening to my podcast. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and it would be great if you could leave me a review. I want to know what are you doing on the 15th to the 17th of November? It is our Vet Rehab Summit, which is our online virtual conference for veterinary rehab professionals. Find out more information at onlinepetals.com.